What's your read on the problem <laughs> that, that, that seems to be brewing right now, like either against Blackpool or against the WDC or against yourself even? Well, as when it comes to myself, I think I've been demonized, mm. um, if I'm honest. Um, I'm blamed for everything except global warming. I suppose that's probably next week. Yeah. Um, I think most. What kind of car do you drive? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say a Tesla, but it's yeah. not true. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. I remember that it was, I think it was the Champions League. And it was Manchester United against Porto about 10 years ago. Uh, are we in, are we in soccer? soccer. I mean, football. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It was football, soccer. American. In America. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Jose Mourinho was the, uh, manager of Porto at the time. Oh, the Brazilian, uh, yeah. yeah he went over to, right. Porto. There was and, a, there was a show on Amazon about him. Yeah. Fantastic. Like fabulous guy. Fantastic. And, um, he got Porto to beat Manchester United. Mm. I think it was the semi-finals. And, you know, the Porto team had been put together probably about the same price as uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's left toe, <laughs> price-wise at the time. And anyway, they beat them. So it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. And um, they said to Mourinho, um, but all your players were play-acting at the end and they were lying down. And he said, well, you know, players get tired at the end, they get cramped and so on. And so it was Sky uh, Sports at the time, and I was living in England at the time. And um, so they said to Mourinho at the end, so actually then what's the problem? Why are people complaining? And Mourinho turned around and said, it's a results problem. We won, you lost. Mm. You don't like it. Mm. I think, if I'm honest, that's some of it, Ikaika. You think people are annoyed that you... Yeah, I think, a, I, I think a, so. I think. A career, you think it's your career as a competitor? You think it's your success as a... Or your <laughs> position in the industry or... I think it's... Um, a lot. Because um, we're in the category of sort of like an envy in a sense or, 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 or jealousy. Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think that's certainly a, a factor. I mm. think most people could, the silent majority could probably factor that in. Mm. Um, Gaynor and I were fortunate and blessed enough to win for 16 years. Mm. Retired for two, came back. So it's an 18-year cycle, if you like. Mm. Then you had a few years of um, Michael and Joanna. No, sorry, you had Brian and Carmen. Mm -hmm. You can see it for Brian and Carmen. Oh, that's right, early 2000s, right now. Yeah. You came back and I think in one Blackpool, Brian and Carmen went on to win the Worlds. And then after that, um, you had, uh, as if that wasn't bad enough, all those years, you had Michael and Joanna for two or three years, and then trained, re we trained Ricardo, and Ricardo beat them in the mm -hmm. World Championship. So well, you're, you're saying this is relevant because there was your own competitive career. Yeah. And then there were the results of couples that you were part of their, yeah. their training. Yeah. And, and not only did Ricardo and Yulia win and beat Michael and Joanna. Uh, were you from, teaching Michael and Joanna too? No, that's, that's another story actually. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> I'll come on to that. Later. Okay, sure. Um, but Ricardo and Yulia beat Michael and Joanna from behind. They were already the, the reigning champions mm -hmm. defending the title. Yeah. And not only did they win, then they won for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So then there's 16 years plus 10 years with a gap in the middle. But that's, that's a quarter of a century. That's 26 years. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a lot for people to, <laughs> to yeah, swallow. That's a lot of success. Um, so. At the time when Michael and Joanna were competing against Ricardo, um, Gain and I taught Joanna when she was 14. Uh, Joanna was a, a pupil of a very, very, very gracious. And I, I must add, I don't have a bad word to say about Joanna. Mm. Um, That's good. She's consummate professional, consummate dancer, brilliant dancer, fabulous girl, dedicated, disciplined, no negatives mm. at all. But we taught her when she was 14. She came over with her mom in the car from Belgium all the time. Um, and used to have lessons with Gaynor and I, mm -hmm. uh, when we used to teach in Bickley in London. And then she danced with Michael and, um, you know, it was a big deal to, to beat a champion in the dance world, as you know, Ikaika, it's a bit like getting, trying to get the bone from the mouth of the dog. For sure. And, um, uh, because the champion always has a slight advantage. Mm. Uh, Which I think is a little unfortunate in, in a sense. Because yes, well, you want to see 
you always want to know there's a chance you could lose, right? Well, it's, it's exciting to watch anyway. Exactly. I mean, you know, the, the, the Bane mob love it. Yeah. Um, and of course, the rainy champion who loses hates it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Carries it with them, to, sometimes to the grave. Yeah. Hopefully not, but certainly for a not insubstantial period of time. Um, just, so, just a quick tangent. Have you, have you, when was your last big loss? Big loss. When you were competing, did you lose ever like a, in a, a way I, that you can't keep with you? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, again, and I partnered up when I was 19. Uh, Sammy Stopford got us together, kept us together because we used to split five times a week. Um, <laughs> Sounds and, normal. Yeah. And then we had rapid success. Um, we made the final of the world championship after a couple of months, mm. our first amateur final. Mm. Then we went to the UK in the January, hoping to make the semi or the final. And we got knocked out first round. Mm. Then about a year later after Dave and Denise, when they turned pro, we won. And then we turned pro. Uh, and after only in our second or third year, we won. Mm -hmm. And after, once we won, we never lost. Never lost. Never lost, undefeated. Because you have a lot of world titles, but not all the Blackpool titles, right? No, we danced about, I can't remember, six or seven or eight Blackpools. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. We, we used to stay out to give other, because we stayed, we won for such a long time um, that we used to stay out to give somebody else a chance to win it and then come back and try and beat Interesting. Them. What was that? Like, that's an interesting thought process. I mean, you're on top. Uh -huh. Why did it stay on I mean, no one else is doing that now. So, well, like, I, was that advised by your coach? I mean, that's a, or the powers that be saying, hey, you better. Oh, God. Let the powers that be, Kaika. If I'd listened to the powers that be, my <laughs> life could have been so different. I don't know if it would have been good or bad. I, I mean, why not keep winning? It's just sort of an interesting thing. Like, yeah. Like, well, we did. I, I, okay. So here's how it went. Um, I, know, I know you're thinking I'm meandering now, but like as more interesting stuff comes up. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Um, so 19, dance with Gainer, start to win the amateur about 21. Uh -huh. uh, win for a year or two. 23. I think we won our first pro worlds at about 25, 24, mm. something like that. 20, yeah, 24. And then we had this, uh, not exactly kumbaya, but eureka moment for, we went out for dinner actually. And we, just before we won, just before we won the first worlds, I think was at the Albert Hall pro worlds. And, uh, Somebody said to us, what are you going to do if you win the Worlds? In, I think it was coming up in March. Mm. And we said, celebrate. What would anybody do if they win the Worlds? And this was just when Sammy and, Bar and, and um, Shirley had split. Yes, but it's a problem then if you win, isn't it? I'm like, no. It'd be a problem if we don't win. How old are you? Whatever it was, 24, 25? <clears throat> And how long are you going to win for? I don't know. Well, the previous record before that was Alan and Hazel Fletcher. It was a fabulous uh, record. They had won five world professional Latin titles, mm. which was, so they were like our heroes. Mm. So, uh, well, if you won as many as Alan and Hazel, you're only 28, 29. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So what are you going to do then? Retire at 28, 29? So then that hit me like a tsunami even though I was just young, of course. And I, and I remember my, what my reply was. My reply was, well, let's win it first and then we'll see if that's a problem, mm. you know? Um, so that, it was like a problem to beat the record of someone else. No. Well, it was, that was in, in and of itself a problem. The problem was, Ikaika, if I'm really honest, mm. winning so young and hoping to stay in longevity, mm. I started to plan it out that we could elongate it as long as we could mm. and make it last as long as we could. Mm. Now, if you just win, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a honeymoon period when you win it first. Everybody loves a new winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get your second year. Yeah. And then you get your third year. And the momentum of the euphoria and the affection and the love is starting to die down. Yeah. By the time you've started winning five or six times, it's ad nauseum. Well, now you're the guy that everyone, they want to see lose. Right. And you're accused of being the cork in the bottle and you're stopping somebody else ever getting a title. And so, so I thought, okay, well, we'll turn that upside down on its head. And what we'll do is we'll stay out of a European. Well, hold on. This just doesn't happen in other, in other things, though, right? It's like when Federer is time to lose because he's stayed too long, 
he just loses. Yeah, but it's um, it's different, isn't it? It's not subjective. Mm. So you don't see the ball. You, you can't argue. Well, you can actually, even with VAR. But basically, the ball goes in the net, or the ball is over the line, or whatever. So the idea is that the 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 the, the, the panel or the, the the people that are making the decisions are keeping you there. Yeah, that, I think that's what people. I think that's what people start to say because they start to say something because they want a change. So you, we decided to give them a change and we stayed out for Europeans, we stayed out for uh, Blackpools, we stayed out for UK and then an mm. international and we would just pick it and mix it. So, But not I've, the world, the world you stayed in. Oh, no, because the world is, is the world. Mm. That's, yeah, if you go to, with the best respect in the world, everybody knows that Blackpool's the Wimbledon. Yes. But if you go to Coca-Cola, and you say, I'm the British Blackpool champion at the Winter Gardens. Very good. Or if you say, I'm the world champion. I am the champion yeah, yeah. of the, the world. The not dancers. Un- yeah. See, yeah. So the marketability of the world, mm-hmm. WDC world championship, the marketability of being the world professional Latin champion, I never wanted that to go to anybody else. I see. So with, and it's no disrespect to it, to any other title, because, uh, you know, as, as I said to you, um, Everybody knows about Blackpool and yeah. how fabulous the international, the UK are, and all of those events. And yeah. Not taking anything away from those. But you kind of have to be in the business to know the Blackpool. Right. Like to, to right. learn later that, oh, Blackpool is the thing. Right. Yeah. That's more or less like jargon in a way. Yeah. Um, so we made the decision that we would always dance the worlds because the worlds is the worlds. And then all the other competitions, they were not replaceable, but um, missable. Mm-hmm. With due deference to the broader canvas. Got it. Interesting. And, and, and going back to Ricardo and Yulia, yeah. at that time, we were asked to teach Michael and Joanna. I was asked to teach Michael and Joanna. Um, I used to teach Michael when he danced with a, a, a girl called Ivona from Poland mm-hmm. before he danced with Joanna. Mm-hmm. He was t- Tonus, uh, who died, Tona Niehagen's, uh, oh, really. Lovely. He was Tona's pupil. and. Um, Root Vermeer came and said, I'd like to, him to try out with Joanna. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, no problem. So it wasn't really a big deal that Root and Joanna asked for lessons at the time. I gave them one or two lessons, but actually overall, it wasn't really something I wanted to do because I have a policy that if there's a couple and you're working really strongly with them, mm-hmm. you don't teach the ones that they're up against. So right. I, I don't... Well, it's another thing maybe that makes uh, for unpopularity. I don't automatically say yes to whoever asks. Mm. Uh, it might be that you wouldn't suit their style or they wouldn't suit your style. Oh, well, that makes sense to me. I'm the same. Just, yeah. just from a professional yeah. like, policy myself. So, yeah, m- even with my... As a, I like to do good work, like sure. work that I'm happy with. Uh-huh. And if it's too big of a of a mismatch with the students i feel ineffective and uh-huh. and and, uh-huh. and yeah and there's also this you know okay i mean would it be fair to say that you're a competitive person <laughs> and then if you're well, not yeah that, <laughs> how could i not be <laughs> of course right and I, I i i mean i think anyone who is would and so right, if yeah. you take if you're in a position where you can select your clientele hmm. and you then take your job as okay i'm, I'm teaching these people these people have tasked me or I, I've, I've taken on the task of trying to get them to be successful in the arena, yeah. then, you know, in some sense, teaching their competition is, I wouldn't say a conflict of interest, but, you know, it's hard. Well, it can be a conflict of interest. Yeah. And that's the way, that's the way I, I generally see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, nothing's written in stone. There are, there are exceptions. I mean, you know, if, if kids come to you, I mean, for example, um, a lot of uh, Vibika Tov's couples came to us when we first uh, moved here to California. Mm-hmm. They used to come in every month in a group of them, like a da- the original dance camp, actually. Mm. Um, and they would come, you know, 25, 30 couples. And that included like Tal and Ilana. It included Austin, who was then Austin and Nino, who have just split, yes. uh, Sasha and Arena. All those guys were part of those original camps who came. Mm-hmm. So... Okay. Now that they, camps, you mean they were Vibika's? Yeah, they groups. were Vibika's, uh, and she brought them uh, to us. Uh, we taught them every month, mm-hmm. including Vibika and Alan. And um, now that they've been successful and they're all kind of in and around the final, I don't think it's a conflict of interest to continue to teach them 
because they've grown into that microcosm of the final around each other. I see. I don't think, but you know, you can't just start slinging people out. You, I don't think. If you've got, yeah, yeah, time with them. But you've got those roots with them and, and you know, you go back a long way. But generally speaking, for example, if I taught, let's say, Marcus Hilton and Arunas was his nearest uh, rival, I, I wouldn't teach Arunas. Hmm. I don't like, like to start a new thing. With, yeah. 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 Hmm.